Hey everyone, it has been a while. I'm currently at Fitness World Gym in Canby Street. Uh, best gym in Vancouver that I have tried. I'm also trained in. Nice. A lot of good machine, a lot of uh, places. A um, lot, uh, lot of racks too, so really one of the best gym and also one of the cheapest. And I'm going to uh, show you what I'm doing currently, uh, training wise. Still training three times for body per week, and uh, as I finish warm up, I'm going to uh, show you what I do right now. So, first, I'll say what I'm going to do is this machine for my strength. Best brand of machines. This is a shoulder press machine, you're a bit laid back here, as you can see. And you have a handle just here, so you're pressing basically all upright. So, normally, you're doing a bit more like a front press with your elbow, a bit more like this. But while hiding the pad just here, as you can see, there is more tension behind. So this way you are more flared out with your uh, elbow, so you are more pushing upright, which is more like a PTN press or a seated dumbbell shoulder press kind of range of motion. With that, we are going to super set with fat grip chains, as you can see here, for six sets. Three sets here first, with three sets over there. So I'm taking you back here with a vocal. So I will be able to show you what I wanted to, sh to see uh, with the added cushion. So here you can see that even though the, uh, the seat is a bit inclined, the bar path is of course very really vertical in regard to your body. So even if it's a bit at first uh, strange, uh, it's really, really comfortable. And as long as you're pushing up and down, focusing on using your shoulder, you will be just fine. As you can see, I'm grinding it out a bit, but really, really good machine. As for fat grip chin up, it's like any kind of chin up. But since here I'm really focusing on building my arm, you will see I'm really flexing hard on my elbow, but I'm not pulling it back. So this is more arm and less back, la less lats involvement into this more little explanation the volume go high and the out. So machine press, normally this isn't the first workout in the week. So I'm not doing machine first, but I did a lot of hiking the last few days. So uh, I, I essentially uh, skipped workout, so everything is a bit mismatched. But normally this is my second workout of the week. Now machine press is something that is really interesting since you don't have to warm this, this stabilizer muscles and the ones that are going to be assisting since the pathway of the weight is already fixed. And also because you can really push hard on the machine since you don't have to worry about anything about balance, stability, etc. So is it as effective? Well, not really, since as you can see, I can go really hard, really heavy weight, and I can really push near failure, uh, for example, next to a dumbbell press, where I have to uh, make sure of that lateral forces and stability and balance is also uh, taken in account. So people that say that machines are not as effective as free weight, it's true, but it's hard. If you don't have enough strength to capitalize on them, yes, they are not uh, your best interest. You need to get strong first and free weight. But if you're maybe injured or you feel better, a muscle contract, or you can just go heavier or just function in spice, totally a valid option for you. Now, for the fat grip chin up, uh, my goal is to reach a certain size with my arms. I really like also to have big forearms, even though my genetic allow me to uh, grow them pretty easily. And I also like chin up. This is, this is one of the best mass builder in the back, most likely, uh, all around. Um, uh, I mean, and in the elbow flexor, so back is patient are okay, and uh, every wrist flexor muscle uh, in the forearm, since you have to squeeze them isometrically. And this is also a good way to uh, balance all the volumes that we're doing with pressing muscle with the pulling muscle. Okay, so the second exercise is going to be 60 degree incline or high incline Smith machine press. Uh, I'm putting the, the bench in this position because I prefer uh, it to the normal bench position for front delt and rotator cuff management. Uh, the angle of press is really more comfortable and you can really over it press the most, overload the most, sorry. And uh, if there is not much upper chest activity when you're doing it, but still a bit just to assist a bit from delt and the triceps. And this is actually the preferred assistance exercise of Zilbunis Saviscas, which is one of the best overhead pressers in the world in strongman competition. He said he preferred it because you can really uh, stabilize everything you want and really focus on um, the delt, basically, 
So as you can see here, um, you might not be able to see it, but the Smith machine uh, uh, bar, bar buff is a bit angled. So what I did is I put the bench in this way to make sure that it is barely touching the, be the beard that I have around the shin and to repress overhead as much as possible. So this way there is the least distance to travel uh, away from my body. So I can really just focus on being uh, like a madman and just push as, more, as much as I can. The bar path is uh, more, less stressful of my joint. And I will keep going with fat group. Again, my goal here is to do three sets of eight with my presses. And with the chin up, it's a total rep of six by six. And I'm back. As I said into the video, this is really one of my favorite exercises, one of my favorite angle to really trash and finish the delt while also getting a bit of assist from the chest muscle, especially the upper chest and uh, really, really a good exercise for assistance and uh, added volume purposes. Also, when your shoulder are a bit tender, a great angle to have less strain onto the shoulder. So yeah. Now that we did the high incline smith and finished the pull up, I'm going to do with the, to go with the under and lat pull down machine for my strength field again. The best machine ever for your lats, for your back thickness or whatever. Great angle, this is kind of a 45 degree pull angle with really close grip as you can see. So yeah, really great uh, piece of equipment. When I will be rich I will have one in my home gym. <laughs> And we are going to keep going with reverse grip flat bench. So here again, what I do is that I put the bench facing this way. So when the bar path isn't uh, really perpendicular to the floor, I'm going a bit down on the, what is my lower chest or upper abs, and I'm pushing a bit more straight up, uh, up and back. Uh, in the, in the direction of my face, most like a normal bench press, which has a G curve to really match more the joint angle that I want to bring. Since I'm going to do reverse grip, I really want to focus on my upper chest and triceps. So this kind of bar path makes sense. Uh, if you're doing it in a free weight ma manner, you do it free weight, uh, it's a straight, more straight line. So as I said, it is a really good variation, great exercise for the mid back, the upper back, the lats, the mid back, the low, the low traps, uh, a really good bar path, a really good range of motion and it's suitable and customization is uh, for anyone since the uh, seating pad is adjustable and you can really cue in whatever uh, you want, whatever if it's external or internal. So a really good exercise, I really understand why so much uh, pro athlete are doing it and loving it. So if you have a machine like this, please use it. It is it is really a good one. As for a reverse grip bench, I was really happy to see it was a great variation since I started to do it in the Smith machine because my shoulder was killing me. Uh, but actually, if you have never done any reverse grip and you want to try it, I suggest you start into the Smith machine because the bar path uh, and the sensation are really, really nice. All right, and we are back this time with the arms. So I'm going to do eight sets of biceps and triceps on the pulley. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to do chest is because I already did it more than enough for me, at least in my opinion, for my goals. Um, in the uh, Smith machine with both high incline and reverse bench. And for my biceps, uh, I already touch them hard with, uh, as you saw, the fat grip chin ups and also the under and grip lat pull down. Even though this is a back exercise and I'm making sure that everything I'm doing is to drive the elbow back to get more um, lats, basically, this is still going to work a lot with your biceps. So that's the reason why. So uh, you might be actually surprised to learn it, but using fat grip to train your triceps are actually a really good option because you have less strain onto the wrist and onto the elbow, and it's really more comfortable and also somewhat not easier, but um, actually more suitable for anyone to really focus onto the triceps. So when you're going AV onto the cable extension, I really recommend it. And uh, since I want to go fast and uh, just uh, to be more comfortable, actually doing your curl with a fat grip are of course a great, great variation to train your biceps harder, your connective tissues, and of course your forearm. 
while also training your grip. So a really good variation to have. Okay, so I'm done with my four sets of press down cable extension and uh, curls with that grip as you saw. Now I'm going to do with, go with dry curl with this bar. So it is, it's just a bit longer than the other. This way I have more room for my hands. And I'm going to just grab the handle on both to do some cable extension, katana tricep extension, uh, Eugen Tiot style. And I will explain just in a minute. Then we are back again, this time as I said, uh, another variation for triceps extension. This one I have learned from coach Eugene Tio, a fantastic uh, bodybuilder and athlete. Uh, really nice to really uh, respect and uh, keep in mind your, the bar path and the connective tissues of your triceps tendon and also your elbow, but while still training hard the muscles. So, yeah. As for drag curl, I have always preferred them with the cable since it's really, really easier to focus on the biceps and really squeezing it hard under the resistance. So the key here is to just keep the elbow back and really flexing and focusing only on flexing the elbow. This is the key here for this movement. Also, if you have really long forearm, probably your best uh, option to build your biceps without uh, having the brachioradialis stepping in. Now that arm is done, I'm going to go on to shoulder uh, isolation work. So as you can see just here, here, I have a little cuff and we are going to do cuff raises. So um, on the presses I did, because it was machine, a freeze machine, there were uh, little to no stabilization needed. So my lateral dead didn't really uh, work that much. So uh, what I'm going to be able to do is to really go deep and try them hard with this exercise since I like just force it I'm going to completely terminate them and in some uh, instances I'm also able to do it with just three sets. I'm going to go with the giants and principle three sets if you prefer when I'm going to chain up uh, some kind of mechanical drop set to go from the uh, most difficult exercise variation of risers with the cuff to the easiest and I'm going to try the lateral delt and the rear delt. This way everything is balanced, everything is properly uh, completely done and I can move on the lower body part. So as I said here we are tricep for the lateral and rear delt. Uh, these muscles are really really key for your physique and you need to have a high pain, pain tolerance to build them. Uh, for shoulder you absolutely need the tend under tension you need the pressure, the mechanical tension that you can have, of course, with the over presses variation and the inclined presses, but you absolutely need the isolation to really maximize them. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm using a mechanical kind of giant set variation. I'm starting with the Y raises that are really, really hard. Then I get uh, going with the lateral raises that are a bit easier, but still, since you're fatigued, it's going to be really hard too. And when my lateral delts are really fried, I am, um, just uh, keep going with the real delt and uh, even then since i'm using a neutral grip it's still going to use a bit of the lateral delt fibers and really keep digging uh, this tricep have really made my delt blown up so try it and uh, you'll see for yourself just done with the shoulder i just stretch them and i just warm up for the lower portion of the workout in heavy pulls so basically what we are going to focus on today um, is more traps and erector because most of the upper body i did was vertical pulling so more lats than traps and of course erector weren't really put in a position where they could uh, really be strained and walk so what we're going to do today is a pull in the rack uh, I will see if I do touch and go or if I reset everywhere, but this is barely uh, above the knee cap, which is not optimal in my opinion, but I don't have possibility to do below the knee or at knee level, so I'm going to go with that. And, my best friend, to need reset, we are going to superset that with phone and only neck flex. And we are back again in voiceover, so I started with the neck extension to this video because I really really wanted to talk about it at first so as you can see I'm using a really loose form which is uh, required when it's really heavy 
uh, this way you are really really uh, taping hard into the neck muscle without um, actually hurting it, hurting your neck and uh, using really your neck extensors and traps. And uh, as for the right pull, as I said, the range of motion is a bit limited, but it's what I had to work out with. So yeah, uh, I'm still focusing on the hip extension, so it's still really efficient. And as for the neck flexion that came afterward with the new bicep, uh, I really like this uh, form with uh, this variation with the uh, neck flex since with the band you are really focusing hard on the flexing portion the contracting and the range of motion and it is really nice for the base of your neck the front part of your neck uh, to change with the free weight version of neck curl so really recommend it and it's really nice to balance out the tension that you could have into your neck um, as you can see i'm really grinding out at the uh, at the uh, end of a range of motion which is required to really achieve maximum contraction. As for the shrugs which is superseded with the neck curls, uh, you can see I'm really uh, using some kind of a loose form but it was just to get back into it. And finally uh, I am using the leg press, so this is a standard leg press, you know, not convergent, it's uh, just a normal uh, one. I'm really achieving, uh, my, my aim is to really achieve a lot of the range of motion, so I'm really focusing on the knee flexion, the ankle flexion, the hip flexion, everything. So that's why the weight isn't that uh, heavy, but uh, you can see the range of motion is really, really high. And I'm using higher reps uh, because of my knee, but uh, really still effective, especially at the end of a full body workout, when your back is fried and you can't really uh, be productive onto squats, weighted squat variation. So yeah, leg press is a tool, and uh, as with any tool, there is a correct way to use it, a correct moment to use it, and, and that's optimal way. Alright, that's it for me. I was a bit in a hurry at the end of the workout, so there is one exercise I couldn't do, which isn't a problem, since I will do it on my bonus day, which I will explain to you, and show you, of course. Um, of course, you can like the video, comment, like and subscribe, and you can share it to your friend to show them that you can do pretty good amount of things when you're training into uh, full body, which people say that isn't effective or just for beginner, or just when you are starting back, easing back into training. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for the second workout of the week really soon. Uh, do not hesitate to ask questions, do not hesitate to reach out for whatever thing you could uh, ask. And uh, if you're interested in my coaching services, you have a link in the description. Alright, you have a good day, you take care, and see you soon. Bye.